All right, let's continue on with our process. This time we have our typical manifold gauge set. I've left the straighter cores in on this and what we're gonna do is attach our hoses like we normally would with any system. You can see here we have the automatic style low loss fittings. We're gonna go ahead and attach that to the high side. Another automatic low loss fitting, we're gonna attach this one to the suction side. And then we have our third hose over here. We're gonna attach this to our pressure regulator. And just like before, what we want to do is we want to flow nitrogen. I want nitrogen to flow from the tank through this charging hose. Then from there, we're gonna open up this high side valve. So we're gonna open this now. It's gonna flow through the red or high side hose, through our automatic low loss fitting, through our Schrader core, into this high pressure line, all the way to our metering device inside, our evaporator. Then we're gonna come back to the suction side. We're gonna come through our Schrader port. We're gonna come through our low loss fitting through this blue low pressure hose. And we're going to leave this loose right here so that we can purge, allow it to flow out nice and free. So we got our high pressure nitrogen. This is gonna read the pressure in our tank. This is gonna read the pressure in the line. But we also have our little flow regulator to allow a smaller amount of flow. So we're gonna make sure regulator is backed off. We're going to open up our nitrogen tank. We said we have pressure in the tank. We're gonna screw this down ever so slightly, just a little bit to add some pressure. Now we see the ball go up. I can adjust the secondary regulator to control my flow of nitrogen. Remember this is nitrogen, so we want it to be free, free flow in nitrogen. So we're free flowing to the ball, just moving around. It's flowing from the yellow hose across the manifold gauge set to the high pressure hose, through the low loss fitting, to the Schrader port, into this high pressure line through our metering device evaporator. It's coming back all the way through the suction line, through the Schrader port, through our low loss automatic fitting, the low pressure hose all the way over here. And we are loose, free flowing, free purging nitrogen out at this point right here. We're just gonna let that nitrogen free flow to push out any moisture. I did leave this system open for about an hour's time to make sure that we had some moisture in there to actually pull out since we've been pulling vacuums on it all yesterday. So we're gonna let this flow for a little bit longer. And the reason we're letting it flow for longer is we have more restrictions. We have the restrictions that are automatically lost fitting here. We got our restriction with this very small manifold. We have the restriction through our automatic low loss fitting. We have restriction through our valve core. We have restriction through a valve core here. We have restriction through our automatic low loss fitting. So we have several more restrictions. We're gonna let it flow for a little bit longer than we normally would. So instead of it flowing for a minute or two, we're gonna let this flow for about five or six minutes to make sure we have enough time to flow it. And again, you can see that we don't see any pressure here. We don't want any pressure. We don't want that water to recondense, repressurize. We want it to just flow. I want that nitrogen molecules to just push out and bounce around, help loosen up any of that potential moisture and help flow or push it out right here at this point. It's gonna put a little cap on our pump right here. Turn our pump on to make sure our pump oil is still good. So we've pulled out to 27 microns. So we know that our vacuum pump oil is in great shape. Now that we're done with the purging of nitrogen, flowing nitrogen through, we can go ahead and shut our tank off. We don't need that anymore. And I'm gonna take this hose connection loose. When I disconnect this, you can see this pressure here dropping because it's flowing out from this point where I shut the valve off through the primary regulator and through the secondary regulator. And then it equals out, but I still wanna make sure I back this off while I'm not using it. I can take this and put it out of the way. So now we have our charging hose or service hose right here. We're gonna attach this to our vacuum pump. Now this particular vacuum pump, it didn't have a valve on it. So what I did is I added my own little valve here so that we could do an isolation test. A lot of people will put their micron gauge right here at the pump itself. Now this is not what I recommend at all because it's not giving us an accurate reading. However, I have installed on the unit like we did before another micron gauge so we can see what the unit itself is doing so we can see the difference of why we don't recommend that. But I have my micron gauge here with an isolation valve and then here I have my regular hose hooked up to the center port. We're gonna make sure we tighten this up right here and then now we can just simply open both sides of this manifold gauge set. Now when we're pulling a vacuum, it's pulling from both hoses through the system. It is gonna take a little bit longer because we have automatic loss fittings. We also have our valve cores inside the system and we're pulling through one quarter inch hose. I'm gonna start my pump up, open my valve. We see the water vapor coming out. I'm also going to open, make sure this, the gas ballast is open and it is open so we're good. Once we get down to about 
anywhere from 10 to 20,000 microns, I'm gonna close off this gas ballast. So it's gonna let it run for a while. So micron gauge, we're at 7,000 microns, but over here on our unit side, we're still at OL, it's not even reading a vacuum yet. So because we're down here at about 6,000 microns, I'm gonna go ahead and close off that gas ballast. So at this point, we're down to 12,000 microns on the pump itself, but inside the unit, we're still at 3,250 microns. Pretty big difference there. We're down below 500 microns, just below 500 microns at the pump itself. But we are still at 1,114 microns at the system. So we still have a long way. See, we're down at 378 microns at our pump, which sounds good. But if you look over at our system, we're still at 876 microns. There's a really big difference there. So we're going to let this continue to run down until we get our system down at around 370 microns. We're at 261 microns at the pump, but we're still at 532 microns in the system. Right, so we're at 220 microns at our pump and we're at 379, 380 microns on our system. So our system is now where we need to be. Even though our pump is saying we're down way below where we need to be, it took us a lot longer before we finally got there at our actual system. And the reason for that is the restriction of our valve cores right here. And also these little loss fittings. So this is the lowest pressure point. So the higher pressure point has to flow all the way through here, through these restrictions, through the restrictions of these hoses, through the restriction of the single hose before it gets to the pump. So a lot of people will put their micron gauge at the pump, but it's not giving you an accurate reading. This isn't really what's happening. Over here, we can see what's really happening. Even if we put a T right here at this point, it's still not gonna be that much of an accurate reading because the pressure inside will be greater than the pressure there. So we don't know what's really happening because of this restriction. It doesn't mean that it's a wrong method. It's just, I want you to understand the difference of your readings and what you're seeing. The next thing we have to do is our decay test, our hold test. And I'm gonna close off the valve on my pump. This pump didn't come with an isolation valve, so I added one manually. I'm just gonna close this valve off right here. It's a vacuum rated valve. So now we've isolated everything from the system. I'm gonna go ahead and shut off my pump. I'm leaving both of these valves open like normal because I want to see what the microns rise to. You can see here we've jumped up quite significantly. A lot of that's permeation through these hoses and any possible one of these connections. So we can see at our unit, we're at 389 microns. We jumped up a little bit, but over here we jumped up a whole lot higher. And one of the reasons for that is going to be simply all of that vapor that's flowing in this direction starts raising this pressure up. So you'll see a bigger jump here before you'll see it over here. We're going to give it 15 minutes and let's see what happens. So it's in our decay test. We're up to 448 microns on our systems. We haven't increased above 500. We're over here at 635 microns at the pump itself. Now we did exceed that level here, but we didn't exceed it over here in the unit. And one of the reasons is these quarter inch hoses are known to permeate. In other words, air and moisture can actually travel through these hoses. So we're gonna see it go up faster in this side than with the system side. Because as that pressure increases on our hose side, it starts to go through these low loss fittings and through our Schrader cores before it ends up in our line and causing the pressure to increase in these lines. So that's one of the things we're seeing. So even though we see that number jump up here, again, this number isn't accurate because it's too far away from the system itself. Now, if you look back over here at the system where it really matters, now we know that we are okay. And regardless of which method used to get here, we still got here. All these different methods we used, we still ended up with our microns being below 500 microns after our 15 minute decay test. So that's ultimately what we need. The problem with this method is it takes a long time and this number isn't gonna be an accurate reading for us. That's why I like to use the valve core removal tools because now we've eliminated that restriction here and also it speeds that whole process up. Now what's different about this one is our next step when we get ready to charge the system. What we're now gonna do is close off both of these valves. That should stop our flow here. Now these are not vacuum rated. There's just a piece of Teflon there. So it is possible once we close these and open this up that we could end up with a backflow through there. So we're gonna try to let that not happen. I'm gonna take this connection loose here and this is an automatic low loss fitting. But these are not vacuum related either. So it's allowing right now air and moisture to flow through here. So we're gonna have to try to purge this back out. I'm gonna hook it up to my refrigerant tank. Make sure I turn my scale on so I can read how much refrigerant that I'm using. Now that I have my tank hooked up, I'm gonna open my tank up, but I'm gonna also leave this connection right here loose. 
we're gonna allow this to purge. So as I open the tank, I'm gonna allow refrigerant to flow through this hose and try to purge out any of the contaminants that got in as we took this connection loose. The problem is I cannot purge right here in my manifold. I have nowhere to purge it to. So we're going to have some contamination with this method that we just cannot solve. And that's just the downside of using this method. So here we go, we're gonna do this very quickly. There we go, we purge that system. But again, we don't know how much moisture got in there. We don't know how much that we pushed out with our refrigerant flow. And because we have our tank upside down, we have liquid refrigerant coming through. We wanna make sure that we be very careful with our two finger rule, making sure we don't get any liquid refrigerant on our hands. So now we have liquid refrigerant up to this point. Now we need to get this liquid refrigerant into the system. We could open the suction valve, but the problem with that would be liquid refrigerant flow into our suction valve, fill up our suction line, fill up our compressor with liquid refrigerant. We start a compressor up and then boom, our compressor is gonna die because it can't pump a liquid, it's a vapor pump. So what we are gonna do is put liquid refrigerant into the liquid line. We can't do this while it's running, but we certainly can do it with it not running. And it's really the only way to add refrigerant while the system is not running. So I'm simply going to open up my high pressure valve, the liquid valve. And now we're allowing refrigerant to flow from the tank, through the hose, across the manifold, into the high side, through our automatic low loss valve, into our straighter port, and then into our liquid line. The refrigerant's flowing to the condensing where it's boiling from a liquid vapor. By the time it gets to the compressor side, it's already a full vapor. The liquid refrigerant also flows this direction through the liquid line to our metering device. It boils from a liquid vapor in the evaporator coil, and by the time it gets through the suction line, it is only a vapor coming back, so we're gonna be protected. I'm gonna let this flow until I get just below how much refrigerant the system came with initially. So once we get to that point, I'll go ahead and shut this down. And again, you won't always get to that point. You may end up with the temperature being so low that you won't even get close. You maybe only have two pounds in here, where in this case we need five pounds. So we're gonna be short, that's okay. We need to get enough in there to make sure we can run though. So now I've added refrigerant to the system. I like to keep it just below what it came factory charged with. And again, that factory charge does not mean that's how much it needs, especially on a split system. The length of the refrigerant lines, the evaporator cool it's matched with, all these things play a part in it. But now what I can do is start the system up. And now that the system is running, I can finish charging it with superheat and subcooling. Once the system is up and running, we can throttle it in a little short burst onto the suction side, giving it time to boil from a liquid vapor before it gets to that compressor. And then right before I get my superheat and subcooling where I want, I can close off my refrigerant tank and I can throttle in that last little bit of refrigerant and it drains it all in. And then we can take our gauges off like we normally would. So that's doing a vacuum with the three hoses. Now we have three hoses, fewer hoses sound simpler, but this took over four and a half hours doing this method. And we also have some potential contamination that gets up inside of here that we cannot stop. We also have the issue with our micron gauge and not knowing where our readings are. So this is one of the methods to do. This is a very popular method, but it's my least favorite method of all of the options that we run through. So there's still so much more to talk about with vacuum. So be sure to check back with us. And so we have coming up next.